What's up guys? After two attempts of trying to get here without forgetting anything, I think I finally have everything that I need for today's install. We have the tools that we're going to be using over here, the STI of course, and we have the White Lang anti-lift kit that I've been waiting about three weeks to install on the STI. I'm excited to finally be doing the install, but I'm not excited to do the install because I've never done this before. But there's a first time for everything and we're just gonna go into it and try it today. By the way, my good friend Eric, once again, thanks Eric, sent me out a big old toolbox for all my tools. And I'm over here still using my bucket. I'm sorry Eric, I'll get these tools into that box soon. We're gonna start off by taking the wheels off and putting them under the car for added security. And of course we have the jack stands. I'm ready guys, let's do this. Damn guys, look at that tire. I'm so glad that I got new ones. That's crazy. All right, we got the jack stands on the car now and I pushed it back and forth a couple times. It feels really sturdy, so it's safe to go under the car now. So the hardest part about this inside is going to be the mounts on the ends of the lower control arm. So if you follow this to the bottom right here is where that mount is. So there's two bolts going upwards and then there's a nut going inwards. That nut that goes inwards is the one I'm worried about because you can't really fit anything in there. And then uh, I think I'm gonna have to lower the cross member to try and get enough room to pull it out. So we're gonna start by trying to break those two bolts that are going upwards. I'm trying to get under there, but there's not enough room. So I'll do my best at recording everything. So I'm using the jack handle to try and get more leverage on the ratchet. <sighs> oh, I can't believe I got that. Guys, we're going for the second one now. Hopefully it's just as easy as the first one. Oh, fuck. Ooh. So far, I got the two bolts from the lower control arm mount off. And as you can see, the cross member here is in the way. So what I have to do is pull this down so I can pull down the lower control arm to get the nut on the back side of the mount back here out. Also, all these spacers right here go on all the bolts from the cross member so I decided to go ahead and just remove all of them now and then hold it up with a jack and then I'll be able to slip in the spacers with this small gap that I have right here. Now that the cross member is like super wobbly it gives me enough room in here to lower the control arm and get a socket into that nut so that's what I'm gonna try and do next hopefully it all goes well and then it should be a pretty smooth install for the most part right now. Once you figure out where everything goes, it's such an easy install. When I first came into this, I was a little intimidated about it, but now that I read the instructions and I got a little bit of help from Ruben, this is like a straightforward install. So right now I'm waiting for Ruben to get back to me on the size of that nut so I can go buy a socket big enough because I don't have a socket big enough. Then we're just gonna undo that, throw in the new mounts, and then we can go ahead and work on the spacers Got the 22 millimeter, now we can go ahead and take that nut out and we are almost done removing everything from the right side. Check it out guys, 
We got it out. Damn, that was tough. This is the old one. And this goes in like this, so if we're looking straight down like this, how we are, this goes onto the lower control arm and then it bolts up to the car. But check out this old one and how beat up it is. This is the new one. The bushings are a lot bigger on this one, that's what I noticed right away. And then check out the color. That's just like an added bonus. That's gonna look super nice under the car. So now that we got this one out, it's time to throw this one in and get all the new spacers in as well. Guys, the first side is finally done. I started this at 10 a.m. and it's currently 2.45. So that's how long it took me to do the first side. Not very difficult. Everything actually went really, really smooth. The only thing that I was lacking again is the right tools. So we did pick up what we needed. So the other side should be a lot quicker now that we have everything that we need. The spacers was about the only thing I was worried about because I didn't know where exactly they went. But instructions actually are really, really good. And they tell you exactly where every single spacer goes. Now that I know what I'm doing, let's see how fast I can finish this second side up. Oh shit, one of these bolts is not budging. Holy shit. Oh, that was so tough. We got it though. New one is going in. Guys, we are finally done installing the white line anti-lift kit. Oh my god, I'm so glad we are finally done with it. So tired, I've been here all morning, but the cool thing is that this morning I didn't know how to do an anti-lift kit, and today I'm leaving here knowing how to do one. So let's go underneath the car and show you guys exactly what I did. We went ahead and did the mounts on the lower control arms. As you can see, it looks really, really good because it's orange, bright orange. Something that I really like about it. That spacer over there, it's also orange. And then we did spacers all along. I believe this is a cross member, but we did them all along here. And the reason for these, I believe, is because this mount actually hangs down lower and it would actually hit this. So that's why we installed the spacers all the way to the front of the car. We also did the same thing to the passenger side. So as you can see, the mount right here and then the spacer right there, spacer right there, right there and all along to the front of the car. The hardest part about this install was not this bolt nor the other one on the other side, which is the same thing, but it was the nut on the end over here because it's facing inwards. It's hard to get a ratchet in between that nut and the chassis of the car, but with a little bit of prying on the lower control arm, we were able to do that. Here's just another angle of the spacers from this side of the car. As you can see, there's one right there. There's one back there and then all the way to back here. Here's the old ones, and as you guys can see, the bushings on this are done. Look at that, so bad. They feel all grimy, and those new ones were super nice, but I'm so glad to have these out of the car. For those of you who know, I can't drive the car today. I can't test out the anti-lift kit because of the tires, but the cool thing that I was talking to Ruben about today is that all these suspension parts are getting replaced and I haven't drove the car since before those parts. So the day that I get it back from the alignment is gonna be like mind blowing. It's gonna be a completely different car with all these suspension parts going in. And not only that, this anti-lift kit is actually not the last thing. I got a couple of things still coming 
that are going to change the car just a little bit before we get the alignment. Ah, I'm just, I'm so excited guys. I can't wait to get this car aligned and finally do some sick canyon runs this year. Well guys, seven hours later, the STI is all done. I can't believe that I actually pulled this off. This morning, I thought I was going to end up quitting like halfway through, but we got through it and everything looked good. Everything went smooth. Um, the little hiccups that I did run into, I just phoned up Ruben and he answered and helped me through it. So thank you, Ruben. Do have a couple of things coming in the mail for the STI that we're gonna be installing next week. So stay tuned for that. And then after that, I think we're ready for an alignment, guys. I know I've been saying that for a while, but I just wanna make sure that I have everything that I need. That way we can get the car aligned all at once. Anyways, guys, it's getting cold out here.